Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God. And I'm coming on here today to give you some insight and messages that I received uh, last evening while in prayer and then this morning after I woke. I Last night, I heard the words Lashish and I'm thinking, what does that mean? So I typed it in and on the search, it came up with a restaurant, which is La Shish, which is a Lebanese restaurant. So I'm thinking maybe that's referring to Lebanon. So I wasn't quite sure what Shish, S-H-I-S-H meant, but I was looking at their menu And I know all of you have heard of shish kebabs. And I'm scrolling down through here. And if you see the shish kebab, it's usually on a skewer. Okay, here it is right here. It says choice of chicken, lamb, or beef. So I'm thinking, what, what could that mean? Well, I was thinking, well, it means something to do with Lebanon. And I believe right now everything's starting to come to a head with all of the countries surrounding Israel and the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. And there was a major strike on uh, a refugee camp, and I believe it was towards the southern part of Gaza, which is where the they say one of the leaders of Hamas was hiding. But it also, there was a lot of civilian casualties, including children. So I know that it upset many of those countries, the Palestinian countries surrounding Israel. So also this morning upon awakening, okay, well, here's the Lashish, first of all, let me show you. at 10 53 p.m. And that was on Tuesday, October 31st. So I looked up 10:53 on Strong's Concordance. And it says Galatia. So I was thinking about Galatia. What is Galatia? So I actually looked up Galatians chapter 1, verse 2, and it took me to the letter from Paul to the Galatians. And it says here, this letter is from Paul, an apostle. I was not appointed by any group of people or any human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. 
all the brothers and sisters here join me in sending this letter to the churches of Galatia. If you look down in verse 6, it says, the section is entitled, There is Only One Good News. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God, who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who are, who, excuse me, deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. So I found that interesting in regards to Islam and the Muslim faith. And I wanted to look up where modern day Galatia is. And as you can see here, this is on Wikipedia. It says here, Galatia was an ancient area in the highlands of central Anatolia, roughly corresponding to the provinces of Ankara, Eskihir in modern Turkey. So as you know, Turkey is one of the major players in and surrounding this area. Okay, so it gives you some maps there showing you about Turkey. Galatia was bounded on the north by Bithynia and Paphlagonia, on the east by Pontus and Cappadocia, on the south by Cilicia and Lycaonia, and on the west by Phrygia. Its capital was Ankara today, the capital of modern Turkey. Okay, so that was interesting. And then this morning, like I said, I heard, well, actually, it was a vision that I saw. It was a vision of a cobra. With neck expanded ready to strike at 7.21 a.m. Okay, so I was looking up Cobra and I wanted to see where Cobras originated from. And on Wikipedia, it talks about the King Cobra. It says here is a venomous snake endemic to Asia, the sole member of the genus Ophiophagus. It is not taxonomically a true cobra, despite its common name and some resemblance. But it tells you where it's located. It says here, Southeastern Asia to Southern China, where preys chiefly on other snakes, including those of its kind. This is the only ophidian that constructs an above ground nest for its eggs, which are purposefully and meticulously gathered and protected by the female throughout the incubation period. And then it gives you a map of where cobras 
actually reside. And it looks like Eastern Asia, and you can see the Asian countries there. And it gives you some of the places where the cobras are located. It says the king cobra has a wide distribution in South and Southeast Asia. It occurs up to an elevation of 2,000 meters from the Terai in India and southern Nepal to Brahmaputra River Basin in Bhutan and Northeast India, Bangladesh, and to Myanmar, southern China, Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Philippines. So that makes me think about some of the tensions over there in the Far East with China and Taiwan. So it just made me think about that and how now it seems like people are beginning to take their positioning and their sides now with China and Russia and they're both authoritarian ruled countries and they're aligning with Iran and it just seems like everyone is taking their own places and their sides in this conflict. So I also came across something interesting about the Cobra when it comes to fighter jets. It's called the Cobra Maneuver. In aerobatics, the Cobra Maneuver, or just the Cobra, also called Dynamic Deceleration, among other names, is a dramatic and demanding maneuver in which an airplane flying at a moderate speed abruptly raises its nose momentarily to a vertical and slightly past vertical altitude causing an extremely high angle of attack and momentarily stalling the plane making a full body air break before dropping back to normal position during which the aircraft does not change effective altitude. So what happens is Essentially, if you can see in this video, when it does this Cobra maneuver, its nose goes up and it's the other uh, fighter jet is chasing it. And when it does that, it goes behind the fighter jet and gives it the opportunity to actually go from being on the defensive to being on the offensive. But it's very dangerous because it stalls out the engine and if there's any type of um, problems restarting the engine, then the plane could crash. And I was also looking at who developed that. Sorry, I could find it here. Give me a second. It says here, during the early 1960s, the maneuver was developed and performed by Swedish pilots flying the Saab 35 fighter jet. It was invented during training for recovery from super stalls also known as deep stalls to which the double delta tailless design of the Saab 35 is susceptible a super stall is an uncontrollable stall which is much harder to recover from than a standard stall it says here the swedish test pilots who discovered the cobra were Banked Alo and Ceylon Utterborn, who developed the technique around 1961 to 1963. 
The Swedish pilot soon considered how to use this move in combat to get a pursuing aircraft to overshoot, putting it in a perfect position for repost, and it was not long until it was proven viable during mock dogfights. Okay, now further down says Sweden effectively shared borders with the Soviet Union over the Baltic Sea, so both sides regularly flew into the international space between the two. In the event that the Saab 35S regularly intercepted and escorted Soviet planes away from Swedish airspace, sometimes these encounters would result in non combat dogfights. Apparently, the Cobra maneuver was used during some of these engagements, surprising the Soviets. Late in, in the Saab 35 service life, the maneuver was used as a secret weapon by Saab 35 pilots in mock dogfights facing the more advanced Saab 37 fighter. Okay, so this reminds me of doing secret maneuvers and also of what took place, I believe it was last week, with the two planes, I believe it was over, I don't know if it was close to Chinese waters, but one of the Chinese jets came really close to a U.S. jet. I think it was only like 100 meters away, they said, or something like that. And so it just reminded me of how these maneuvers could come close to something unforeseen happening and could escalate in some type of a like a kickoff event into what could lead into uh, World War III with all the nations teaming up and choosing sides. Okay, so that was another interesting thing with the Cobra I found. And like I said, I heard it at 721. On Wednesday, November the 1st, it says a vision of a cobra with neck expanded, ready to strike. So that just tells you something right there, ready to strike. So everyone's getting in position and they're moving all the aircraft carriers, the fighter jets, everything, the warships, everything is getting set up. So when I looked up 721, It is A-R-N-I-O-N, Arnion, which is the definition lamb. And you know who the lamb is, Jesus. So immediately I was drawn to Revelation 5. We'll just start at the beginning. It says, Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who was sitting on the throne. There was writing on the inside and the outside of the scroll, and it was sealed in, with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals on this scroll and open it? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weak, weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered, but it was now standing between the throne and the four living beings. And among the 24 elders, he had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit of God that is sent out into every part of the earth. 
He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals and open it for you were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God and they will reign on earth. Okay, so. Obviously, those are the seals. So are the seals about to be opened? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I was led to. And then lastly, there was three videos that depicted uh, these back and forth missile strikes and how the region is becoming um, very dangerous and a precarious situation. And... Every, like I said, everyone's taking their side. So if one thing happens that's going to make someone upset, it's just it could just escalate and be like a domino effect, one thing after the next. And then we'll, we're going to be in World War III. So I'm going to end with these videos. So please, if you don't know who your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, please get to know him today. He died being tortured on a cross so that your sins may be forgiven. You are saved by grace through faith in him. Repent, which means turn away from your sins. Accept him into your hearts today. And you will be able to escape from the wrath to come. Crypto makes the world go forward. Yemen's Houthi rebels claimed they launched a drone attack towards Israel's southern city of Eilat in retaliation for the war in Gaza. But the Israeli military say it shot down an approaching area target outside Israeli airspace as regional tensions rise in the Israel-Gaza war. The incident triggered air raid sirens in the popular Red Sea tourist resort of Eilat and sent residents running for shelter. The incidents come two days after Hamas, the group running the Gaza Strip, said it launched a rocket towards Elat. The Israeli military said the rocket landed in an open field. <laughs> 